need to find this place or we'll be late. Make a left on Astrology Avenue. Oh, I'm sorry, I meant right. It should be right here at 444 Speedway. Oh, turn, turn, turn. It looks like Renee. Yay, we're on time. The James and Kelly Show. Great, let's start the show. Hi. Hi, James. And all my brightness. And all your brightness. Like well, you carry so bright. much light. That's yes. why. Yes. Well, I'm having a professional come in and do the lighting. So there you go. <laughs> that would be great. Just light. <laughs> That'll be great. And you know what? You'll still have so much light. You're yeah, so radiant you. anyway. So. <laughs> That's true. That's true. So. Oh, gosh. Well, let's, let's ask. First of all, how are you doing from everything? Well, I'm doing fine. Um, that was very shocking last week. So um, thank you for informing me of that. If anyone's going to inform me of that, you, you, it's great to hear from you because I didn't know my phone was charging. So uh, yeah, I was in shock and um, nothing happened till the day. Next day I was with, I'm with Gordon Smith, who was, um, was a, of course, everyone knows a medium from uh, the uh, Scotland. And he was, uh, we're talking about, we're doing an event March 5th. We're doing a Ooh. modern mediumship. How Zoom. great is that? Yeah. You can sign up for that of the modern mediumship and what it's about. So that's not gonna be a Zoom call. It's on my website. Anyway, we're talking to him then afterwards to say, would you mind if you could help me for a second ask him the content, see what he can pick up? And he picked up just that um she was in a slumber state. And we're talking about Cindy Williams, everybody. Williams. If you're new, to, if you're new here. And my dog mm -hmm. girl, Pearl, you be quiet. Now let that do a show, please. Thank you. <laughs> that is puppy mode still. But I'm gonna end. <laughs> so, um, and anyway, yeah, Cindy Williams, a good friend of mine for many, many years. And um, and Kelly told me last week, right before we went on, that she passed. I didn't know that. It just happened. And I just was in shock, so I didn't do the show last week. And um, um, anyway, so she, Gordon picked up that she was just um, kind of in a slumber state, which I did as well. And no one knew how she passed because she passed for a, of a quick illness, I guess. So I called up her assistant, and she couldn't say anything because the family wouldn't let, let anything out. And I understand that. But... It was all very mysterious, but um, anyway, I, I picked up that she said she said to me she was walk she was calling out for someone she didn't know where she was, and then her friend she said my friend Jim came to get me. Now Jim was an old psychic friend that her and I went to years ago. That was a good friend of hers. And I forgot all about him, and he used to do readings where he'd open up the Bible and go to pages, and that's how we'd tune in. Huh. Completely accurate. He's the first psychic. So you got to be very well known, young man. And you'll be known for writing books. You'll be known for um, communication. Because I don't know what form that communication is going to take. This is years and years ago. But he was really good. So he came together. And then um, yesterday or Saturday, um, a friend of mine was visiting. And uh, funny enough, Cindy was supposed to be here that week. But she listened last week. And then anyway, she came to during my I was getting a massage. She came to me really clearly. And she kept on saying, oh, James, oh, James, oh, James. It's just the brilliance of it all. Oh. And she said, people should realize the brilliance. And she goes, and she was very philosophical. Her and I used to have lovely talks because she had moon in Scorpio. Capricorn rising, moon in Scorpio. Or was it the, or the other way around? And so we had these long talks about spirit and so forth. And she said, it's beyond, um, you know, galaxies and planets. It's just the brilliance of, the, of God, that light that permeates everything. And she said, we come back each lifetime to remember that brilliance of ourselves. And um, sometimes some souls come in with more of that in their like mental bodies would call them maybe a genius, if you will. But she was giving me like that concept. And it was really interesting. And she said, the most important thing, James, is tell everybody not to be judgment. Don't judge themselves because they block the brilliance when they judge themselves. And she said, in a way of judging oneself is fear being fearful. Please tell everyone, don't be fearful. And that's what she found out. And that was the message she left me with. Oh, and then that's it's beautiful. Crazy. Freezing cold, bone chilling cold came through me. And the only other time I experienced that was when my good friend Debbie Ford passed over yes. and I helped her pass. And that was the only other time I felt it. And when my mother passed. Wow. So that was it. And, you know, I'm glad she's out of this. You know, it's so interesting because we know somebody that close. And a lot of you people have, of course, have that sense of someone you knew. Um, you kind of share stuff with them and feeling that she was away from the limited space of the physical dimension. And I told you two days before that I was cleaning out my closet and I came across a photograph of her and my sister, which was taken back in the 90s. And here's a photo. Oh, my gosh. Look how young. Wow. My first wedding. Thank you. So, wait. Tell everybody. You actually got married the first time at I Cindy's house. got Cindy's house, which was Gold, after Goldie Hawn designed it. And it was one, one or two houses away from when Madonna married Sean Penn. And it was right on the coast. And... Uh, 
it, it was a karmic wedding, no doubt about it. I had to do it. Knew I had to do it. It was definitely college. an agreement on the other side. When I saw her in college, I, I, she came out on the stage. I was working in this uh, theater thing at school. And she's and I said, Oh, I could marry that girl one day. I didn't know anything about marriage, psychic stuff, nothing of that. And I didn't know if I was the women or not. I had no idea what was going on. Anyway, we dated, and to make a long story, long, long story short, it, it ended up we had to do it, and we did in the weirdest of ways. And people, and I said the spirit was meant to be show us things, and they did. They gave me um, oh, they just it just this house in Malibu. Uh, when we did this um blessing, these doves came from nowhere. I made a circle around the unity candle and back up to the sky. Uh, we, I was offered a place in Palm Springs for a honeymoon, and then another client offered me her castle in the south of France for a honeymoon. Wow. People giving free jewelry. Um, it was just wild. Wow. Um, yeah. So you know, Cindy was very kind to lend me her house out there in Malibu for that. It was amazing, amazing. And um, anyway, we were good friends for a good, about 30, maybe yeah. 40 years now. And we always would talk about life and death and so forth. And she talked to, but I don't know, a month before. She goes, I want to be buried next to my mother. And I knew there was nothing that I, she would say is wrong with her because she would have told me that. So there was either a foreshadowing or something. So very interesting and very kind, generous woman. And she, oh, she came a third time to me. And all she did, and I told you this on the phone, she, all she did was um, she gave me this energy and she said, you've been so generous, gener gener generous friend, a great friend to me. You've always been kind. You've always had an unkind word. And I just, and she gave me all this gratitude, gratitude. Oh. It bathed me in gratitude and, and graciousness, I guess you'd say. So oh. That was my experience there. And it was, um, you know, we were close friends. You know, we were friends. We'd pick up. We didn't speak to each other for months and months. And then we'd pick up like you and I would always do. We'd pick up. Yeah. From where we so thank you, everybody, for your kind words, too. I, I know a lot of you send me kind thoughts. So thank you. Yeah. Thank oh. you. Appreciate oh. it. <laughs> And now on to earthquakes and to, does it and now we're on to other we're now we're on to Mars out of bounds actually. <laughs> yeah. I had a um, dinner with my friend Jeff that you know and he said what's going on because the energies feel pull push me pull you and of course that full moon didn't help and that was a moon in Leo. We, we well if, in Vedic astrology it's in Cancer. Okay. So because I always go by Vedic astrology because if you if anybody ever uses any of the apps that show the stars you know yep. it will actually show Moon in Cancer it okay. actually shows the original place or the the places where the planets and stars are right this moment so that's why Vedic astrology for me is really great for prediction because it shows you exactly where things are at this moment so um, and yeah it was in Cancer and it really elicited a lot of emotions a lot of feelings um, and it was a great time time to be able to do a lot of releasing and work in a pattern right now of releasing. So anything that um, you've been thinking about or working on or anything that's just not fitting your life right now, we actually have a really interesting aspect. And I'll talk about a couple of interesting aspects, but we have a couple of really interesting Wait, aspects. Wait, Juan, can I just interrupt by asking you that yeah. full moon cancer, the mm -hmm. fullness of the earth, that would definitely have something to do with the earthquake in Turkey. Right. It would have something to do with the earthquake. There's a few things that would have to do with the earthquake, but that would be one of them. A full moon earthquake, you bet. You betcha. You bet. Because it would bring all kinds, if you think about it, all emotions really get into the earth. And then kaboom. Absolutely. So that full moon was deep. Deep. Yeah. She's got deep. Really, I, mean, I, I felt it very strong. And I had a friend saying my house was a cancer. Hello. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. It was a 7.8. And that's, you know, just enormous, just enormous the shock or another earthquake 7.6 after that. It's like, whoa. yeah, it's unbelievable. But we have a few things so that we had the full moon. And uh, also we have Mars is out of bounds. And what does that mean? So if you look at the ecliptic field, it looks like this. So when we do astrology, we look at points between this point and this point. Well, Mars is actually out of that area. So it's like you almost can't see it. It's so far out of the norm. It's extremely out of the norm. And so the energy of that, it stays this way, James, until May 5th. Oh, God. So, yes. And Mars rules anger, violence, warlike activity, fighting, contention around the world. It's a really intense time uh, for different events. And for instance... And here's another situation that we have, and this comes up tomorrow, but we would already be feeling this energy. Tomorrow there's a quincunx, which is when planets are 150 degrees apart, and it's between K2, which is the dragon's tail or the south node, one of these points, and Jupiter. And what does that mean? It means that it is a very, you might feel really off track tomorrow. You might feel very 
I don't know, uncomfortable or uneasy because tomorrow is a really great day actually to look at your life between that full moon, this Mars out of bounds and this quincunx. It's a great time to look at, am I on tra track? Is my life on track? And if it's not, how did I get derailed? And if I'm derailed, how do I move back on track? Because it's a great time actually to move back on track right now because Saturn is um, exalted and it, it's a great time to look at your stuff. Go really deeply in and look at the things in your life that you need to pull yourself. What did they used to say, James, by the bootstraps? And, bootstraps. you know, but yeah. look and look at your life and be really honest and then start to move forward. Because as we talk about tonight, which life, you know, life, before life's life. before life. We planned many things, you know. Yeah, I'm sure we put lots of derailment in our lives so we could figure out how to, to do it. It's almost like a Mario game, you know, trying to get through to one to the next thing. Yeah. So, and, you know. And, and, you know, I, I've been feeling that way now for a while. No. <laughs> yeah. and, and it's true. Things in my life are changing left and right, and it's yeah. refocusing everything. And it's very, very true. Mm -hmm. And I think that people got to realize, you know, we're mostly made of water, so we will feel these things. Yeah, we'll, yes. and, and there's no accidents. I don't believe in accidents. I, I don't either. I don't either. It's all I've, experiences, whether we want to judge them or not. It's yep. extreme experiences because we're in the human school of the extremes. That we're of the extreme. And so right now, this next several months is the extreme. I, I, That's I, a great I, thing that you just said. It's a school I, I of extremes. Like, yeah, and I feel there's going to be some shootings, major shootings that really do. Yeah. Um, so this Mars. Yeah. I just feel that I feel that viol uptick in violence. I hate to yeah. say it, but I do. Yeah. And, uh, yes, you know, it's we have to ride it out. I mean, that's what it's about. It's exactly it's right. Boat, if you know what I mean. It's, <laughs> it's so true. It's well, like and <laughs> and the other thing is, as it's happening, you know, you also have to have that knowing that you still have an inner purpose. You still have a purpose to be here. You still have things to do and you still need to view your life. If you can with joy on some level, right. And, and step back at the observation. Exactly. Mode. Stronger these pulls are that I was for myself, how I survive it is I pull myself back even further. So I notice something's yes. wobbling and getting out of control. I just pull myself back and ground myself and don't get caught up in the emotion of it because if you get caught up in the emotion. It's like the middle of an eye of a hurricane. You get pulled right, right in yeah. and you'll, you'll feel totally out of control, out of whack. And you don't want that. You want to be in balance. So I do observation, observation mode, and I'm kind of like aware of everything going around me, but I'm not in it. And that's really is that's a great lens, the observation lens. It it's really a great helped. one. Mm -hmm. It's helped. It's really, really helped. Yeah. And like even with Cindy who just passed, I said, Well, you know, I really said, but said, I'm just happy at your home. Yeah. And, and and you know, that's that's it. it. And it doesn't mean that you didn't sh get shook up. It doesn't mean that you didn't feel. You did you did all of the above. Part of the human experience is it's feeling. Right. It's the emotion. Yeah, of course. It's, it's all these bodies we deal with, the mental, the physical, the emotional, the spiritual bodies. Yeah. And part of life is the integration of all that. And I think in some lifetime to come back to, uh, as we'll talk about in just a minute, to work on the mental body, to make that even stronger, mm -hmm. and, and or the spiritual body or the emotional body. It, it's different yeah. for each soul. So, yeah. 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 So true, James. Oh, gosh. Um, wow. Oh, and I love this question. Polish drama queen says, do we plan individually or as a society? Both. We're going to talk about that. Yeah. Both actually. Yeah. yeah. But an emotional roller coaster here with my mo. Yes. Marlene. Yeah. For everybody. But it's, um, thank God we're here. And I said this today on soul care. It's great that we have an awareness that we're open-minded, that we have this community. Right. Yeah. And, uh, I always say everyone tell everybody about it because people might not know about it, this community. And a lot of people like just to, we like to share in this community with people and let people yeah. know that there's there's a place to go. Well, and it's a soul group. It's a soul group. You know, and we talk about soul group. We're going to talk about soul groups on the other side and that we have, and we have soul groups here. It's true. Hi, Star. Hi, Denise. And say I love Pol Polish drama queen. Love that. It's me, Debbie from Alaska. Hi, Debbie. <laughs> Only you would write that, Debbie. Yes. <laughs> Hi, Ann. Ann's back. And Belinda Whip. Hi, Belinda. Wow, it's been a long time. Yeah. I changed my settings on my computer, as you know, Kelly. Yeah. So I'm seeing things, actually, the words very large now, which is good because I can see them. Good but for I'm you. Not, I'm not sure what you're seeing. <laughs> the comments you're seeing, but I'm, I can probably <laughs> see people's comments. Yes. Yay. Oh, good. You still have room on the Alaska cruise, we're up to 79 people. 
So that's so great, James. So room. great. I'm going to do an event um, coming up in a few weeks. I think it's around the 15th of February. I'll post it. Um, and Kelly, you're going to be in the event. Sorry. I didn't, I, I'm this thrilled. I'm telling you, but on evening free event for people who are going to go on the cruise and share what the workshops and the readings are going to be like. Yeah. So we're going to have an evening of that. And like, that's so start, great. We're going to do readings. We will. I'm not sure mm -hmm. we're going to do some private readings or not. We, we'll see. We're going to do a lot of a lot of readings with part of the cruise. A lot of people are asking that. So yes. They, yeah. You know, for sure. So we have plenty of room for that. Okay. Oh, it's going to be so such a great. It's very great. It's it's going to be you great. Ron yet? Have you booked with Ron? Have I booked with Ron? Yeah. Oh yeah, I did. Remember, okay. I did that. Inside cabins, are, I mean, the outside balcony cabins are starting to get. Oh yeah, no, very, Ron had my room for me already, James. Okay, <laughs> it's a very busy time in August, everybody, because he yeah. told me he emailed me yesterday. He said, you know, it's the it's the most popular month of the year is August. <sighs> So the cabins are going. So he said, tell tell your people that they want to go to get in the balcony. They have to book right away yeah. because they're going quickly, which they will. Yeah. And that's, that's the best. There's time nothing to... quite like pulling up next to a glacier or as close to a glacier as you can get it with a like balcony. It. It's pretty wild. Oh, that's amazing. You're sitting I'm there sorry. drinking your coffee watching this. It's unbelievable. It seals on there and it's like, what? Yeah. Yeah. And the color is so spectacular. I can describe it. I don't know. Twilight I know it's blue. like a yeah, kind of like a light turquoise and aqua. Yeah, like my favorite color. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> is it really? Wow. Yes. Oh my gosh! Find your colors tonight. People are asking. Well, sometimes we do, and sometimes we don't. Most of the time we don't. So, I think we. I had this on and Kelly like. I, well, I actually bought this over the weekend, and so when I saw yeah. you wear that, I said, "Oh, you got to be kidding!" I yeah, said, so "I got we got to be twins." On another level, yeah. most of the time we just, but most of the time we connect on another level all the time. We, you know, I'll call Kelly Shaw coming. Just been thinking about you, just dialing your phone number. So, yeah. Oh, it's totally true. And, well, and you caught me on a Friday after I had quite an experience. I mean, what was Friday? Friday, I I had, was at the dentist on Friday when I had. Uh, should I tell everybody what happened? Yeah, everybody should. This really, my, my Petco story. After you tell another. Oh dentist. my God! Okay, because this really has a lot to do with plans that we make on the other side. And on the other side, life before life, I get a lot of questions from widows and widowers, and sometimes sometimes they want to meet somebody else, sometimes they don't. But often the question is, would my spouse bring me another person? Oh, yeah. Oh, so you and I both know that that to be true. But I had an experience on a Friday that was just unbelievable. I went to Friday afternoon, I went to a new dentist. And as I was sitting in her office, this beautiful suite, it was like a spa. It was just beautiful. She had this huge window. And she said to me, and I've never had anybody ask me this in my life. She said, uh, would you like some laughing gas? And I said, would I like laughing gas? I said, I don't know. I've never tried it. I mean, is you I never had tried that? Never oh, in my I life. Are you kidding? <laughs> never in my life. So she That's said, Oh my God. I go, Well, how does it work? I mean, she goes, Oh, you breathe in and out of this tube. And right. she said, She goes, You'll feel really good. And she goes, It's in and out of your system like in three minutes. And I go, Are you sure? Like, Don's not going to have to come and pick me up because I'm an hour away from home. She goes, no, it's going to be fine. So I go, okay. So I'm, and then she, I start to take the breast and then she says, wait, I just want to tell you something. She said, you might see things because people that sometimes they've told me they're, they've shared their experiences where they see things. And I go, I'm a medium. I don't think she understood the, oh, what that meant. A medium? I did. I said, I'm a medium, but you know, so, yeah, so yeah. don't no. And then that was fine. I didn't care. Anyway, now I'm taking six of these and I'm like about ready. I'm howling. Okay. I mean, it's the funniest thing to do. It was, it's, it was fun. But anyway, I look up and in this big window, I see this giant white owl with his arms like this giant, giant white owl. And he's staring at the window. And I said, stop, <laughs> look at the, the white owl. And she goes, are you seeing things? And she had her two helpers back there. I go, no, he's right there. I mean, and then she goes, and they they were stunned, and they said, how, how, "What?" Uh, and this owl was just like, mm, like not didn't budge. I said, "Oh my God!" What? Then she said to me, "Well, what is it? What does that mean?" And I said, "Oh, let me." And I'm laughing. I'm high as a kite, you know. And I go, "It's a huge deal. It's the female psychic. It means that all of us will have some experience because you've got your two assistants and the two of us, and we're all our lives are going to change. It brings big messages of hope and change." And she said, she started to cry. And I said, well, why are you crying? And she said, you don't understand. She said, I have a new boyfriend. And his wife died a year ago. 
And he, she said to me, well, if I'm supposed to be with you, because he, the husband, the boyfriend kept saying, you need, my wife is sending you to me. And she said, oh, if that happens, I need to see a white owl. No, really? And ta-da, the white owl shows up. And then she said to me, I said, well, (laughs) I have the name around Christy. Or I said, no, Krista. And she said, her name is Christy. And I said, yeah, yeah. And there's four kids. She said, yeah. And I said, but two of them are going to have big problems. And she's already telling me that you're going to have to take care of these kids. And she appreciates you. I thought this woman was just going to pass out, James. (laughs) It was quite a deal. But that's really would have been an agreement on the other side, right? True. That they would have, you know, I'll be with your husband. Your the, the two people would be together for a certain amount of time, and then I will send you somebody else. Is that's an agreement that would have been made? Correct, correct. And and it happens a lot where, um, as you know, spouses pass over. I can't tell you nine times out of ten, I've heard I'm sending you someone else. Be open to love, and and it's and it's happened. Um, where they meet the person later on, many years later, they got married again. They're very happy. And it's so interesting, it, it, but they do, they want us to experience love. They don't want us to sacrifice our lives because they passed over. They want only love in our lives and they will find that person for you. Or it'll be destiny points. You're meant to meet that other person. That's in your soul contract, which we're going to talk right. about here. Yes. So well, let's then, talk about what it, goes on before we incarnate, before we incarnate. Sure. So, so, uh, and I have the, um, I was online earlier looking up some stuff and I found this wonderful, wonderful site. If I could, I wanted to share it with everybody it's called star quest mastery. And I just wanted to read this if it's okay. Cause I want to talk about the atom. So there's like, when I wrote a book called reaching to heaven, I was kind of channeling some information. They said, there's a seed that's in the heart and the soul. And that seed lives through lifetimes and lifetimes and lifetimes and remembers everything. It's that seed in the, in the whole, it's out of the heart, it's called the zygote, I think it was called. But anyways, I'm looking this up. I had this in my book. But then I, I, I came across this site. It was like, um, the memory seed atoms within your soul. Isn't that interesting? So I just wanted to read a little bit of this. It says, this is only channeled, supposedly channeled from Archangel Michael. It doesn't matter where, where it comes from. It says, beloved masters, it is virtually important for you to understand that these are unprecedented times, whereby many special dispensations are in force. It is a grand opportunity for you, the seekers of light, to tap into your divine heritage and your special gifts and talents. At rare intervals and during the transitional period from one great age to another, Cosmic law allows the beings of the angelic realm and the spiritual hierarchy to pass through the veil and make contact with select awakened members of the human race. You must express willingness and a desire to interact with these wondrous advanced beings, for they will not infringe upon your free will. When you focus your attention on a particular master angel being of light, they're immediately aware of you and will respond. The more intense, sincere, and constant your desire, the more of their radiance they will bestow upon you. Uh, your guardian angels, spiritual guides, and teachers will make every effort to assist you to receive the higher frequencies of wisdom, which are critical for these chaotic times of transformation. These benevolent beings in, in, endeavor to gain your attention by intensifying the light within your solar power center, that's your psychic mm-hmm. center, and eventually within your sacred heart, which is where the seat of the soul is located. You have waited centuries for an invitation to consciously communicate with the ascended masters and the angelic realms, and they have been patiently waited this time as well. Communing with the beings of light is a great evolutionary step for you as human beings, for it quickly facilitates a new conscious awareness and a powerful transformation within you. Now, I read that when I was going back to my research and my you know, talking about the, the zygote, this special seed. So I thought that was pretty great. I don't want to share it. I want oh, to share yeah. It. But um, I believe, and, and this is very funny, is one of the first things Cindy said to me, there's no time, which we know there's no time. But <clears throat> let's say you're, we're planning your, as a soul that there's a time for you. There's a special time for you to come back on this earth to experience, to get as much soul experience as you can, but going through the human experience mm-hmm. to help you. Let's think of it as a school. And you have to take various lessons in that school to grow, just like you take any any classes to learn and to grow, to understand, if you will. Maybe to understand compassion more, or or maybe um healing, or maybe love of self, or maybe forgiveness, or whatever, or uh, maybe loneliness, or maybe critical thinking, or maybe depression, whatever it might be. Mm-hmm. You have to go through a certain thing, and there are many times you'll sit with before a council or ascended masters, your guides, your teachers. And it'll sit with you and your soul group. And we could say groups too, but for right now, say just group. And those groups could be a group of your mother, father, freak, uh, aunts, all your relatives, your friends, close people in this lifetime who are very close with you, friends, family, so forth. 
And it's interesting because it seems that, and I don't know how they do this, but there is a, a plan that's made, a divine plan, and how each soul is going to fit into the other one's classes or take, they can take school yes. classes together, right? And in one lifetime, and I always say it's like a stage play, in one lifetime you were the mother, and now next time you're going to be the father. You're going to be the child who dies of a, a heroin overdose, or you're going to be someone who does suicide, you're going to be, oh, this is going to happen, it goes to divorce, or whatever it's going to be. And and it's almost like you got to learn both sides of the coin. So what it's like to be the grandfather, it's like to be the child with the, who's uh, who has a suicide, what it's like to be the parent of that child. So they're all different lessons to learn fully. fully. Yeah. So yeah. we agree upon that with our guides, uh, ascended master, if you will. And there's a timing that's set up. And Kelly, you know more about this with astrology, that that's energetically mm -hmm. connected with the, the soul. Yeah. And, and we could go into it really esoterically, but we'll keep it really simple. It's keeping it really simple. What happens is when you're on the other side and you might be out in different galaxies. You might be learning this and learning that on the other side. And then there's this magnetic pull that pulls you in. And you're like, I remember feeling this going, oh, I guess it's time I got to go deal with my new, you know, my classes on earth again. Yeah, It's that odd feeling. I, I swear I felt this so many times. And you just you get you pulled in. So then you work on things. So let's this let's say in my lifetime, this lifetime for me was about, about responsibility. So I would have picked families, <laughs> a family that uh, I had all the responsibility for because it was my life theme. So we do have life themes. themes. It might be yeah, fear. Themes. It might be love, as you said. It might be <laughs> commitment. It might be um, self worth. It might be wisdom. It, you might be betrayal and forgiveness. But it's, in fact, I've heard this quote before, James, and I love this quote. It's, it's, there are two, the most important dates in your life. And the first one is the day you were born. And the second one is the day you find your purpose. Oh, that's great. I never Isn't heard that, that a great one? I just love that. But what happens is whatever it is that, that you've come to earth for, they will set up your curriculum on the other side. So your curriculum may be some pretty rough situations on the other side. It doesn't, seem that difficult but when you get in a body in density they're quite challenges so they'll set them up it's important that we say that you have free will too you don't have to take those classes if you don't right. want to absolutely if, if there's free the will of it what happens if you don't if you do and you decide whether it's time for you to do it this time around exactly. on earth there could be many places to do it many other schools and in fact sometimes people will want to do so much here and their guides, the masters, the elders might say, I think that's too much curriculum for you. Okay, stop right there. How many times have you brought through someone oh. who's completed suicide and they say, I came back before my time? At least once or twice a week. Right? Yeah. It's because you have free will to come back. And I've so many times just soul said, wow, you know, I came back before things were set up properly. Things weren't yes. naturally in rhythm. For me. I took on too much. I always felt out of it. I never felt part of it. I felt out mm -hmm. of rhythm. And yeah. it's true because it's a natural feeling, a natural time to be born, natural time. And if we rush that with our free will, we have to deal Ex with the consequences. Exactly, exactly. One of the things that I found fascinating is after my, I had a traumatic brain injury and I started seeing all of these things on the other side. And one of the things that I got to see was a giant auditorium. And James, in this giant auditorium, it was, I would call it the auditorium of volunteers, you know, thousands of souls in this room. And I remember people standing up in front saying, now there's going to be a plane accident during this time. Who would, who needs to have that experience and who would like to volunteer? And I remember sitting there going, I have chills as I'm saying it. Oh my God, I'd never put my hand up for that. <laughs> I remember thinking that. But if you look at 9-11, if you look at the Turkey earthquake, if you look at any big situation, it could be, uh, they, why would somebody choose these experiences? And it could just be that they, it was karmic, that they needed to, that they um, wanted to be a hero. They Maybe they wanted to be a martyr. Maybe they, it all depends on, on each soul. But those are volunteered positions. Well, I, I mean, all I can talk about, well, one of the things I can talk about, we've mentioned before, is that I've often wondered why I became a medium and why would I be doing it at such a professional level, at such a global level. And you did it. From the beginning, 35 years ago. Yeah, I did. And I was the first one out there on television before anyone else, really, before Sylvia Brown. Way before. And and I, I was with Brian Weiss, past life regressionist. And 
and, and we did a group to Alaska and many other places in the world, but I remember this was an Alaska trip. And he said to the audience, the people, the workshop participants, you know, um, you can ask for anything you want. So ask a question. I'm going to put everyone under and he put us under. And I thought, okay, this is not going to work for me, but I'll try it anyway. And I just said that I thought, why would I come back as a medium? Why would it be as a, well known on television? I'm kind of shy. Why would I do that? And it was really interesting that in many other lifetimes, I, and I saw myself, my eyes and my mustache, and I was a general. And all that changed was the, the uniforms changed. It was all these different wars. And the only thing changed were the uniforms, all these different wars on this earth. I'm the Prussian and the Civil War and, and all these foreign countries. But I was always responsible for telling my men when to go in and kill people. Oh. So in those lifetimes, millions of people died. So I had to come back in this lifetime to heal millions of people to balance out that karma. That's why it came back. That's the only thing that would make sense. And that's, because, oh, that's, that's what it is. We have these lifetimes yeah. that we're balancing out. We're balancing out karma. And this lifetime, particularly people, souls wanted to be here during this lifetime because it balances up. It helps us seven times more. It's the energy is so set. The vibration is set for all of us to grow so much. That's why James and I are always pushing people to grow. I, I just heard you speaking. Someone, a guide of mine stepped forward. It was a woman guide who I never <laughs> knew before said, it's time to stretching the souls. This time around is stretching your soul. Okay, write that down. Okay, thank you, new guide. This little, this I got a new guide recently too. That's so interesting. That's, yeah, I'll tell you about that later. Her, but I could draw her face. I could draw because like reddish brown hair, beautiful like greenish. Red, maybe eyes. that's why you and I are wearing reddish brown today. <laughs> be and she's like intergalactic. And oh, she, my she favorite! Tell everyone to stretching their soul fabric. Oh my God. Okay. I'm writing that down. It's so true though. It's so true. It is true. Cause we are stretching our soul. And as you stretch, you, you enter new atmospheres and new experiences yes. and new attributes of your soul, new parts of yourself. Yes. <laughs> I love that. I love that. They call me Lucille. Okay. Lucille. Thank you. Oh, she's wonderful. Please. I could, I could, and she looks like she has, um, you know, what she looks like, um, remember Bewitched, the opening animation of Bewitched? Of course. Liz Montgomery, the little pointed nose, she looks just like that. Very similar. Ah, isn't that wild? I love it. I love that. I think that's so great, James. You never know what's going to get. We, we no, get you, you never know. Um, <laughs> and, and I, I got to say too, uh, Kelly, this is really important that people know that when you come into this lifetime, you prepare for this lifetime ahead of time. Yes. So let's say this specialty that you're going to come in to be known as an artist or um, uh, an actor or actress or a, a chemist or a, a medicine mm -hmm. doctor or a nurse or a healer or healer. You prepare for those things. And yeah. even like down to uh, down to those gifts or those abilities and this is another thing Cindy was mentioning to me that we all have these abilities and they have to come out in different lifetimes. You'll, it's almost like you have a, a, a bunch of tools in your toolbox yes. and you're going to pull out that attribute for this particular lifetime to work on that. So in this lifetime, you can use that to do the work and learn the way you're supposed to learn. So you prepare for some of that before you come back. So let's say you want to be an artist, you'll prepare and there are schools over there, the universities, you kind of perfect that art, perfect that craft before you come back into the physical. Okay, so Linda, I you know, on my book, <laughs> I actually I wrote like about this. I actually in. wrote about that, James, that on this lifetime, and I don't think you did not know this part of it. I actually wrote that I brought all my tools with me. Oh, did you? I actually used that word, <laughs> that this lifetime I had earned them. It's everything. I just want to validate what you're saying. It's everything that you know, that we did. So, um, and Lori goes, do we have to come back? I don't want to. You don't have to come back. You're free will. No, I don't know. I wonder about that. So let me just, let me just yeah. say another side of that because my thought is when we sign a soul contract to come to earth, is that something that we can just say, well, or do we need to finish the contract with earth? Well, I, I think <laughs> it's like we, we sign up for school and it's not good to cut class. Right, exactly. You will have to make it up eventually because yeah. that's your soul fabric that becomes yeah. part of your being. And, yeah. and and just think about the experiences you lose out on. Yeah. Schools. You'll have to go through those experiences eventually. Right. So, and, you know, I really think, Kelly, that when we're, we're in, the, in, the, in the school and then we go home. Right. And we look back at a lifetime with like a life review. 
and we see, oh, there's no time. It's you know, right. 70, 80 years like that. Right. Like, oh, that didn't really mean much. I more. wonder, in fact, you might say, I wonder why I didn't complete the lesson of forgiveness when I was like right there and I just thought about it, but I just didn't. Because that will be a lesson for everybody, by the way. There are certain universal lessons that we all sign up for when we go, you know, like you take your GE in college, first two years or your, you know, your GE. Well, that's uh, kind of what goes on here. But there was a great question that uh, Kathleen M. asked, and she said, hello from Maine. She said, since we have a soul contract before we incarnate, do prayers actually help when they're needed? And can prayers change an outcome? Wow, that's a good question. That's a good yeah. question. Well, I, I would say that as prayers, um, um, I often say that prayers are pearls of unconditional love. So they raise the frequency or vibration. So in some way we could say it opens up that space to look at it or to bring an energy which is needed to, for clarification. But if that person has, or that person with experience has to happen for growth, it will happen. But how we handle it or how it's presented might be altered a little slightly in a, I don't know how to put this, in a loving way, a more acceptable way. Um, I, I can't change the outcome per se, but how it's dealt with certainly could be. So it's a great answer for that, actually. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I guess you know, pray, people ask me over the years, the prayers help those who passed over. Yes, I remember it. Thoughts are things. And, and and you said before, Kelly, forgiveness, you don't learn that one. We have to remember that we're all connected. You know, yes. that one is omnipresent nurturing energy. When I had my near the near death experience, I was so mindful of the fabric that I'm just a small piece of that string, if you will, and that big, big tapestry. But my string is really important because it'll keep that knot there, that knot there, it'll, it'll keep it together. But right. if don't, it might fall apart and I'm one responsible for falling that apart. I don't want to be responsible. So well, big thing. <laughs> and having said that, so if you if you hadn't done your life's work, none of us would be here, James. That's how important your life string is there. If you yeah. think about that like that. And I, and I really... The influence. the influence is unbelievable. And everybody has that ability to hit and up with other people, to connect that way with other people. Because if you change your life and that has the ability to change other lives and you have to think like that. And I want to answer Jay Curse's the idea of immutable contracts seems ridiculous or a school, not courtroom, right? Correct. So there's not a judgment there. You don't have to do it. You don't have to, but it's almost like, what is, what is the better path? That way or that way, you could choose it. You don't have to, but it's just experiences. So not good or bad, it's experiences. So as a soul, you want to grow from all the. Let's say we grow more by all the different experiences we have, good, better, and different. All those experiences help us to be who we are. Think of it yes. that way. Yes, yes. And Joanne Dwayne Gibson says, so each lifetime we get stronger and with more knowledge. Correct. Yeah, that's correct. And the more you know, the more you realize you don't know. And the more you know, the more responsibility you have. You have responsibility. And, and now I'm going to tell you this, which is really interesting. Um, can you change the outcome of your destiny? So let me just write. This is a good question. Uh, and Margaret, JVP, you, you can't change the outcome, your destiny path. Well, it'll take you longer. You can, you can stop. But you don't have to learn that. You know, I, I feel there are certain destiny points that will happen yeah. no matter what. Yeah. Now, we have free will. So let's say we have to go down this path. But we decide, oh, that's a lovely brook. I'm going to go sit by the water side for a little bit and enjoy the sunlight on that brook. And we get down there and we sit. And we can stay there for as long as we want to. But eventually, we'll get back up to that path and walk away. So we will. It, it might take us one lifetime or several if we want to. But we will have to go through those experiences. We decide one and a half long. We have free will for that. So, for instance, if you have a family member that you decide not to talk to, guess what? You have to run into that eventually and resolve that. Maybe this lifetime we can carry it over. You don't want to carry those human things over. Trust me. No addictions, no levels of unforgiveness. And, and Kelly taught me a very wonderful lesson in that she said, well, you know, and I had trouble with some friends and family members. And she said, well, James, they're just limited. And I'll never forget that. You really helped me with that. And it's true. That soul might be a third grader. You might be in eighth grade. It's just that you have more exactly. experience. And one of the biggest lessons I learned this lifetime was unrealistic expectations. Oh. That was my expectations on someone else. Yeah. And like, well, why did it that way? Why didn't they return that? You know, well, they didn't have the awareness. They don't have the consciousness to do that. Right. So I got to be better, bigger, bigger, better than. Right. God bless them. And, and you know, I hope that taught them whatever, right. you know, what that might be. But the people, some people don't. And we're, we're forced in soul groups many times to learn. So your family and your friends are your greatest teachers. And if we're all connected as one and you're having a problem with, a, let's say, a mom or a, or a partner or whatever, part of you is within them. 
So as you look at them, they're a mirror to yourself. What within you is not resolved? What within you is not in balance? Because they're just reflections of yourself. All your soul groups are. And you're learning from these particular souls. Right. And on the other side, when we're planning and preparing for what we're going to do in our soul groups and how we're going to affect one another, there may be some challenges that you actually look at while you're on the other side in classrooms. So you actually take classes on the other side 100%. to prepare to come here on earth. That's and right. I know I'm positive. I teach some of these classes. Like, I don't know, that might be a little rough. Now, when you get to that point, this one's going to come in. I can see myself strategizing with the souls of how to do or how to, once you get into density, because we Kelly, not only that, but as you know, as we've experienced together and like whenever I'm doing a workshop and the people come oh. back the next day and say, oh, I had a dream. Of oh, we don't end the workshop physically. We go to the other dimensions and we can, we're talking about it on the other side as well. When we sleep in the sleep state. We're over there working. Oh, so yes. It happens yes. all the time. Yes. Um, I want to answer this because in Paul Lambert says, karma must come into this with us living many lives. I must have events that took part that need payback, so to speak. The law, the law of cause and effect. This is not nature's law of cause and effect. What you give out, you get back. But karma is not necessarily negative. A lot of people think it's That's negative. That's correct. No. It's positivity no. too. It's what you give out, you get back. Whatever yes. that is. So more yes. love you give out, the love you'll get back. You might see it in this lifetime, you might see it in other lifetimes, but it's just important to give it out because it's the right thing to do. And sometimes, James, it's so interesting because you might feel like I don't deserve this. I, this where did this come from? This could have been lifetimes ago. And in this lifetime, you may have said, all right, I'm going to balance it all out. So it may not feel fair. It may not feel just. It just is. And the masters don't look at karma as good or bad. It's just a leveling out or a balancing. Balancing. You know? It's a balance. Yeah. As Lucille says, tightrope. You're a tightrope walker, she said. <laughs> I like her. Maybe she, maybe walk. it's Lucille Ball. <laughs> it isn't. I was wondering because she's come once before, but no, it's not her. Okay. It's more like the bewitched uh, lady. She said, I love it. A tightrope of the soul. Yes. That's interesting. <laughs> and sometimes you get intertwined or sometimes they fall off. Oh, okay. Um, but they get back on again because they have to have the courage yes. to learn. But they have to have the courage to learn what it's like to live in the human experience. And there are many places to live, she said, many schools to go to. This is one of the hardest ones. And this is the one, one of the ones which is the most uh, unevolved, she said. And she's right. And I've heard this before that, you know, we're still learning about love here because we still kill one another. No one wins in war. You're killing each other in war. That It's just such an illusion. When Don't you harm another, you actually are harming yourself. And when That's you the law of one. Review, when you see that, you feel it 10, 20, 30, 40 times stronger than when you were there. So you don't yes. want to do that. The wrong thing to do. As a matter of fact, when you do your life review, that's where you learn about what your next life will be, like what you'll work on. Because you'll see the lessons you pass and the ones you did not pass. Yes. And then and many say, like, oh, I'll do it next time. I'll do it next time. And they put on their agenda for the next time. And some says, we just talked about it earlier, you're in such a rush to get it better that you come back before your time. Yes. You want yes. Yes. Lots of Aries people, I think. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and, you know, just because, you know, I've had so many people say to me, you know, I don't feel like I fit into this family. Well, you okay. may have chosen that family because, you know, if for for that actual feeling, actually, that you really had to learn to be to do it on your own. You really had to learn what it's like to be here on right. some so level. You learned about yourself then. You say, I don't fit yeah. in. This family. What, why don't you fit in? What's going on within you? What part of you is different than them? And just acknowledge that. And what are you learning from? Remember, it's always learning. So what are you learning from them? Don't judge it. What are you learning from them? Right. What are you learning about yourself with these people? This is a good qu question. Kathy Kananenko says, I'm 62 and I still don't know what my purpose is. Is that normal? Now listen really careful, Kathy. Completely normal. 62 is about the age where you really actually hone in on it. Yeah, God Saturn. bless you if you come in early. It's after your second Saturn return. And Saturn return is amazing the second time because it comes with Jupiter, which is wisdom. So all of the shit you went through before, it brings in wisdom. And that's often where people can settle into their their what they want to do. So you have to really do a lot of journey inward. That's really important. And really start asking yourself what is important to me where do i want to go what do i want to do because 62 is fabulous for that why did you say today we we're talking after soul care we haven't gotten a phone with that because you're going to do your your special class on narcissism <laughs> on narcissism yes you got 50s they say fuck it or something and so you yeah. said 
this shit don't matter. Something you said something so funny, and it's uh, so true. It's, it's so true. Oh, yeah. No, it's, it's remember just, that? Like 40, I do. 50s, uh, fuck it, and 60s, yeah. I don't give a yeah. shit. Six, yeah, 60s, you just don't give a shit because you just don't. It's after that second Saturn return, you just yeah, don't really. care anymore. It but it's matter. a great time to start looking at yourself. And yes, I am, we are doing a class. It's, uh, nar it's called it's Narcissist, Surviving a Narcissist. So it and thriving. So if you know somebody, a parent, a child, a spouse, a coworker, a good friend, any of the above can be a narcissist in your life. And you know, they come in for our life for a reason. But we're gonna actually, Dr. Shirley and I are gonna be talking about really amazing tools to help you survive, help you thrive with them. Well, we're going to give examples. We're going to be actually having a discussion. James is going to be there. I, I know you're going to be taking the class, but you'll hop on when you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Are you it's going to be really. Please, yeah, I know. It's, I mean, you've been around a hundred or so, right? At least. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway. Like Melody McClure, um, can you take on lots of diseases, pain, physical suffering, and does that help you get rid of karma? I, I got to tell you that I think disease and and taking on physical ailments is definitely learning about karma, uh, mm -hmm. without a doubt. But it's also teaching those in your soul group how to take to look at you differently and take care of you, gives them an opportunity to treat you a certain way or take care of you. Sure. And then Sherry, and we could go into more details, but we want to get through as many questions as we can. Sherry Abdu is really an instrument. Can you explain Akashic Records, please? Yeah. So Akashic Records, I always think Akashic Records, Edgar Casey, who was a sleeping prophet in the 20s and 30s. Yeah. And he used to go into a light trance and go to that soul's record. So I always think the Cage Records is a huge library. Yeah. And and I've seen it. I've been there. I have two giant it's books. A giant books. And you yeah. go and you open it up. And I've done workshops to bring people to Cage Records. And you see your soul's plan from the beginning of time on. Actually, the, in the cruise, the Alaska cruise in August, we're going to do the Cage Records. That's part of it is we're going to go through the Acacia Records of the soul. And, and Sherry, the Acacia Records are where all of our lifetimes are held. All, all of our information about us, everything we've gone through is, is in this. Yeah, we're going to do the Acacia Records on the Alaska Cruise. We're doing a whole um, afternoon about that. And going to be great. Records, opening up your soul self. You'll go there with your guides. One of the first things we're doing on that cruise is we're going to set up people with their guides, who like, like this lovely Lucille that just came here, opening up to how to connect with them, how to reach yes. them, how to understand what, what guides are which, what do they do for you, how to access them, whatever you want. So they'll take us on a journey of the Kashuk Records about the third day we're going to do that. So that's going to be important. Oh, amazing because you never know what lifetime you're when you go get to the Acacia records and you open up that book that's right you just don't know i mean i mean it'll be so exciting because people will actually be raising their hands james james you oh, know that, i've had people talk about yeah. the designs they've seen, actually seen drawings um yes. like three-dimensional designs and oh, oh yes it's amazing the colors that we don't have here and they've explained it they explain oh it's, it's so interesting and they explain the patterns of the soul and from lifetime to lifetime, they'll explain other places they've been to, not of the earth, but other places, um, and what they've learned from those other places. This earth is like, like Lucille said earlier, it's a hard place, and it's a place not as evolved. We're in one of the lower rungs yeah. of evolution, spiritual evolution, because we're still killing one another. We don't understand love. But there are the other places, like I think Venus, but the planet of Venus, within our solar system, there are millions of solar systems, by the way. Yeah. But this solar system, Venus, I've always felt a Venus. And people are like, well, the people living in Venus or Mars? I think, of course, they are, but they're different frequencies, so you can't yeah. be aware of them. But I feel Venus is that love place, that in that yeah. root love. But I just feel those beings of love are all in, that, in Venus energy. We always say that's where a lot of Lemurians came from. Is that right? And, yeah, and the Pleiades. And they say that um, Lemuria was where the Akashic Records began, actually. Well, there you go. Yeah. So there you go. So you're right on. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you and I. Like oh my God! Points of light. Man. I love this. Um, Tracy Tate says, "How do you succeed in forgiveness if the other party is not interested?" Oh well, what do you say, Kelly? Oh, I say you you forgive for yourself. You forgive and you you pray. You forgive. You send them love. You send them light, and you and you do the best you can with it. But, yeah, because you know, you don't want to suffer. There's no reason why you're yeah. so suffering. Um, John Cabot, the Twelve Principles of Forgiveness. Yeah, Cabot Zinn. Yeah, John Cabot Zinn. No, no, was it John Cabot Zinn? No, I'm thinking of someone else. Oh. Um, Twelve Principles of Forgiveness. I'll get it really quickly. Um, <laughs> but um, it, it's really it's you want to stop the suffering of yourself. And what's the point of it? You don't need to. And forgiveness is not saying that you. Um, are, are okay with what the person did to you that you're uh, you're accepting it no, no. it just you come to a space of 
forgiving, let, letting go. Because yeah. you don't need the suffering. It affect all your areas of your life if you don't. There's no yeah. reason to keep it going. Yeah. 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 I'm looking up how you answer this question. Okay. Oh, so this is a good question. Beth Bellastria says, how long do our lives between lives last? Oh. I would say, I'm going to say longer than, I'm going to say anywhere from 25 to 50 years. James, what do you think? Some people come back oh, right away. Human, human point of view. Like and a, from the human a, point of view. And you've yeah. like three dimensional label. Uh -huh. that, yeah. Like years. Of that would be. Yeah. Essence yeah. of the spirit world. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to say I'm not coming back right away. And, and oh, please God, this is my last lifetime. But. um. <laughs> well, here maybe on the earth, but other places you'll be. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, I just mean on earth. <laughs> I have other places I want to go to visit. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I've heard this. And again, it's so human. It's so three-dimensional, so it doesn't really matter. But I've heard that it's almost like 200 Earth years. It's almost like you're the third or fourth generation of your family link. That's what I've Okay, heard. I love that answer. I love that. Because that so, many, family, so right? many spouses, James, have said to me, you know, after their spouse dies, they'll say, you know, has my husband or my wife reincarnated? I'm like, mm, no. I mean, I... No, they're going to wait for you. So we got to remember that there's aspects of a soul. There's parts of a soul. Yes. So right now as we sit here, like I've said before, it's really interesting that, you know, 30% of the soul is in here, but 70% is out here, maybe living other lifetimes because there's no time, maybe living in the past, the future, other galaxies. And, and that's part of our soul too. We're only aware of this physical part of ourselves, but that you're so much more than that. And the people that in this lifetime, this physical vibration that you knew, those personalities of those souls, that sliver of that soul, you will be, meet up when, on the other side, that other 30% of that person, yes. and you'll come together again. And um, when you pass into that realm, supposedly you're aware of all those other slivers of your soul and all the different aspects of their being. And those are like, as Sydney told me, brilliance, brilliances of light. Um, think of it, prisms of light, like a diamond is shimmering. And that's part of our that. soul, that's shimmering, that's experiencing all these different things at once. Yeah, so true. Julie Jordan says, I have a sister who is a narcissist. I have to read this one. My other sister and I have distanced ourselves from her for our own well-being. Our parents have passed. How will this play out for us? Julie, I don't know um, many families that don't have this situation. <laughs> No, it's true. I mean, this is a normal day in my life hearing about this. Um, and it's amazing when you get older. It's amazing things, how things play out. Sometimes you do have to distance yourself and just do it. I mean, really, take our class. We'll be talking about this one. Yeah, Good you know, question, sometimes you, you sometimes, um, I'm sorry, I can't find that 12, 12 principles of healing. Is, but, um, you know, you've picked that experience, you've picked that family, and you might have picked a very dysfunctional family to learn something from. Every one of us has, I think, a dysfunctional family in some oh, level, somewhere, some way. And it just makes us grow. If it was the same way, kind of be boring, we wouldn't yeah. learn anything. Even yeah. this earth, I mean, it'd be kind of boring, it'd be flat. So we want to know, True. learn something. It's excitement. We want to come to a boring place. We want to come to learn something. We want to have excitement. Then life is all about the movement. Life, the most, I, I would say that we can always bet on this, that the most, the constant, number one constant we have is change. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, it's movement. Life is movement. Right. Joe Sunderland said, you should contact Valerie Bertinelli. She was quoted on Facebook as saying, I'm over the narcissist. I actually saw that, Joe. And I was like, woo, good for her. <laughs> I thought that was amazing. Um, it's so good. interesting. I wish I could find the 12 principles of, of healing. It's really, really good. Oh. I just can't remember. I hold on. He might be here. Hold on. It might be here. Suzanne Aaron says you should watch the TV series ghost inside my child. It's about children that remember their last I've lifetime. Watched. I've seen it. Is I've, it good? I haven't seen good. it. I don't know if it's still on, but it was on for a while and it's very good. It's very good about, well, Tell, you know, tell everyone again, Kelly, about your experience with your grandson. With that yeah, well, and with lately with my grand, well, my grandson, but my granddaughter just recently had an experience. She's only three years old and she climbed into bed with her mother recently about several weeks ago, early in the morning. And she was crying and she said, what, what's the matter, Lulu? And, she, and she, Lulu said, she was three. She said, father, father died. Right. And Holiday said, father, like, no, daddy is here. He's it's not daddy. He's, he's right here. And she said, no, father died. Father and my granddaughter, and she named the granddaughter, died. How did they die? Holiday said. She, she said, they drowned. And I'm with the pastor now. The pastor is helping me. I mean, she's three. First of all, pastor? Who uses that word? At three? My, they don't use that word in their family. And 
And so anyway, she, she had carried this life into this life. And it will be interesting to see how it plays out. So Kelly, could you could we think that she's experiencing that lifetime over here, present lifetime here, yeah. and then here, but as children were very open to all of those unfoldingness of all those experiences. That's a, that's a wild way to view it. I because like that lens. I think as children, we're very open until we learn to be restrictive, whether it's through programming, whether it's been adult teaching, you know, yeah. we wall up. But I think sometimes kids are very open to all those um, multitude of uh, experiences at once and they have to, you know, and then, I mean, it's also traumatic. So let's say the trauma. Yeah. The trauma of it. Yeah. Uh, they remember clearly more clearly because that's much more energy there. So she would, that would make sense. I don't know. I, I think it might be happening, you know, parallel lives. I do could believe. be. I mean, it's so, it's so interesting. It could absolutely. Be. Now listen to this. This is from Lisa Jamuzi. And she said, do you think that people that experience suicide, children passing, multiple deaths, heartbreak, yeah are more evolved souls or newer souls. Oh, I think they're more evolved. Well, I think that the hardest lessons are reserved for the master souls. Yeah, yeah. I really do. And I think, um, and this is done through um, Dr. Brian Weiss, another regressionist therapist. They find that a lot of suicide or that, that children tend to come back. Kids, people that pass over younger tend to come back right away. And a lot of suicides tend to come back quicker. That's what they found in his work. And Interesting. Other- yeah. yeah. I've heard that before. That's yeah. so true. Wow. So interesting. Um, let's see. <laughs> well, Melody McClure is so funny. I got to be pissed if other Melody is slim and has a kicking, bo- a kicking body. Ah, <laughs> she probably does. <laughs> okay, so Gina Joy says children live in a theta frequency until age six, which is both like um hypna got gogic and past life so they're very very open to other life very very true yeah very uh, interesting we're in a soul group is in the next life do we go to the same place well that's a good question but not every soul will evolve as much as you will so hopefully your know. classmates which is soul group will evolve and that's what we're hoping that we can help to teach each other with the classes you know our soul groups because remember you're not just evolving on your own soul you have a soul group and by the way don't forget like we all have Karma or growth, even down to your neighborhood, down to your country, down to this earth, that different countries of karma, different cities have karma. It's really, really interesting. I mean, um, yeah. we're placed in places for a reason. I know, and I know that I'm the first one to tell you that. <laughs> and um, and things you might not like, things you like, things don't make mm-hmm. sense. Things, you know, it's weird. It's a weird thing. But even when it doesn't make sense or crazy or something, you got to go back to self because. This is the grounding post, your your own soul. That's true. And one thing that we can depend on is that life will continuously change and bring us all kinds of challenges. Yeah, opportunities. I like opportunities. That. There you go. Oh, my gosh. So on Thursday, tell us about Thursday. I know Thursday at noon you're going yes, to be doing. I, I, yes, the soul care. So it's an intensive uh, this Thursday at 12 o'clock. And every, I've started doing every Thursday intensive soul care. Soul care is I go through my school and there are certain courses people want to know about. So right now we're doing a life coaching certification course, which has been really, very really successful, very popular. And I'm going to tell people more about it on Thursday, more intensely. Some of the exercises, I work with some of the exercises. There is right there. Renee put that up. So that's the Thursday, 12 o'clock. And then every Thursday, I'll be talking about a different course. But this was this one focused right now. And right now, also on Facebook, I'm doing 28 Days of Love, which tonight I got. I've been trying to catch them. They're fabulous. It's fabulous. And I just want to talk little aspects of love. It's free course. And that's throughout February because it's Valentine's. Well, and- it's so por- important right now because on Valentine's Day, actually, Venus will be exhausted. Exalted. So if anybody's needing to be in a relationship or wanting to be in a relationship, it's a great time in the next about six, eight weeks. Really great time. Good. That, that seems perfect for me. I told you the other day it was. <laughs> and thank you, everybody. Thank you, James. Thank you, that was thank a great you, topic. Thank Thanks, thank everybody. everybody. We'll see you next time. You've been listening to Both Sides Now and Beyond, featuring spiritual medium and master teacher James Van Prague and spiritual medium and psychotherapist Kelly White. That was great. Maybe we changed some lives. And maybe opened up some minds. Which way do I turn? Uh, right. Uh, I, I mean...